Zimbabwe for tuning in to yet another informative edition of your program. This is Agricultural New Directions and I am Wadzanae Manyori. Now if you look at fish farming from a sustainable economic point of view, you would find that fish farming goes beyond the rearing of fish, the marketing of fish and even the consumption of fish, which is the case right here where we are going to be discussing in this episode sustainable fish farming right here in Zimbabwe. In this particular episode, we have taken the liberty of inviting Mr. Andre Hoffman to our platform. He is going to be taking us through the sustainable fish farming practices that he's been engaging in for the past few years. Mr. Hoffman, thank you for joining us today. What the hell are you? I'm okay. Good man. Yes. As we get into our discussion, I would like you to give us a brief background of how this started, your fish farming project. Well, what the, it all started uh, many years ago. My dad was uh, uh, quite, a, quite a passionate fish farmer. Okay. Um, he had, had embarked on the ag uh, aquaponics side of things okay. um, a, a long time ago, uh, many years before his time, to be okay. fair. Um, and he left a lot of literature and a lot of... Uh, knowledge and a lot of information for me and okay. uh, what I did was I just uh, started learning up, reading up about it, taking it into the next context, right? Okay. So that we understand where or, or how to rear the fish okay. as healthily as possible. Okay. Now as we talk in our discussion, let us talk about high intensity fish farming. What does it mean? What does it entail? Looking at this setup, I understand that it is one that could be regarded as high intensity fish farming. What does it mean to our audience, to our farming community here? Well, the most important thing with uh, fish wadzi is uh, you've got to understand that fish thrive on oxygen and they live on oxygen. So you've got to uh, sort of manipulate the amount of oxygen that's in the water that then allows you to um, have more numbers within a smaller confined space. Okay. So the most important thing is to regulate or to increase the amount of oxygen that's in the water. Okay. Now as we're talking, the name of our program is Agribusiness. We understand that farmers venture into this kind of enterprises, in the, into this kind of projects in order to make a living out of it. In terms of business, in terms of it being lucrative, how is it? How has it been for you over the years? Well, <laughs> Anyone who tries to go into fish farming is going to see that it's, it takes a long time to realize the revenue side of things because okay. fish take quite a long time to grow, right? Okay. Six, seven, eight months depending on your climate okay. uh, up to the level that they, they are now saleable. Okay. Which for some people it makes it uh, very difficult to hold on to that cash flow um, for a very long time, right? Okay. So what we've done is we've increased the amount of fish, I mean if, if this was just a stagnant piece of water, this, uh, this would hold maybe 80 to 90 fish. Okay. So in here we've got 700. Okay. Right? Um, throughout our ponds we're doing various sizes to see what is what what can be held in the tanks. So we've got 700 in here. In our in our other tank there we've got 1,200. We've got 1,500 in the other tank, and we've got 2,000 in the in our in our, our furthest tank. Okay. Now looking at the carrying capacity of these tanks, you have said that it, if it was stagnant water, there would have been 15, uh, 90 fish yes. uh, in this pond. Now let us talk about the numbers and even the carrying capacity in terms of liters of water and uh, the whole process and even your oxygen circulation, the kind of energy that you use. What is going on? Okay, so, so basically what we've got is we've got um, th three mechanisms of oxygen. Okay. One is a, lower, is a lower section of oxygen, which gives you oxygen in the lower ranks of your water. Okay. Oxygen, oxygen doesn't, oxygen is lazy, it likes to stay in its own sort of environment. Okay. So what we've uh, also um, gathered is that if we create oxygen at the bottom, we should also create oxygen at the top. Or the surface. Yes. Wow. So in here we have 7,500 liters of water. Okay. Every day we have to do a water change of uh, about 20%. Okay. That, that maintains your ammonia level and your pH level and it keeps your oxygen level uh, spot on. Okay, now as we get deeper, let us talk about the durability of this equipment right here. Because when we talk of fish farming or any business in agriculture, it is an investment. Yes. You want to make sure that your material, your machinery is going to sustain you in the long run. So in terms of durability of this equipment, uh, what are your sentiments on that? Okay, so these are, these are just normal average swimming pools that you buy in a, in a hardware or whatever in South Africa. Okay. There are a few people, a few people who sell them here locally. Um, 
these are made as swimming pools for kids to play in, etc, etc. So at the end of the day, they have to be durable because they're going to hold some form of human capacity in its, in its normal life, right? Okay. So we, what we did is we just adapted that to become a, a fish tank. You know, it's cheaper, quicker, easier, faster for it to, for it to be put up together and then it's up forever. As long as it maintains uh, water coverage, the plastic stays as durable for a very long time. Okay, let us talk about the differences, the variances in terms of this kind of fish farming that you're talking, that you're referring to as to high intensity fish farming compared to where people have ponds like earth ponds or the traditional means where people used to or people are used to having their fish on the ground. These are on a tank. What are the differences? What are the economic benefits that comes with a farmer adopting this type uh, kind of system? Well, the most important thing is that it's movable, right? Okay. Okay, so if it's in the wrong place, for whatever reason, right, you can move it. Okay. The other thing is, is that with your normal traditional tanks, they have to be so much bigger. Okay. Right? And you can only hold a certain amount of fish because fish have to have a certain amount of oxygen passing their gills. Okay. Right? So, it, for this, we've, all we've done is we've just manipulated the system. We've Try to understand what the fish require and then we go from there. Okay, now let us talk about your feeding regimes. I understand that rearing of fish comes with feeding as well mm -hmm. and you are also talking about them increasing in an, uh, size, increasing in weight. Let us talk about your feeding, re uh, feeding regime. Okay, so in here we've got uh, Nilotticus, okay. Okay, tilapia, okay. right? So um, what we've also discovered and it, again it's a lot of it is in trial okay. um, uh, era uh, at the moment okay. right what we've discovered is that as long as we keep our water what you would call dirty right a green color with algae the the sun creating uh, photosynthesis inside the water okay. we found that we've had to we can reduce the amount of feed because the fish are actually feeding on the algae and their own excrements right oh, okay. um, so basically they're feeding on themselves so we we have and uh, we've got all the document to prove it we have reduced our fish uh, feeding regime to twice a day okay half the amount of uh, fish okay. uh, fish food and they are they are working on um, eating off their own algae and whatever Okay. Now, viewers, we are talking about high-intensity fish farming, which goes beyond looking at consumption or even marketing of food. We are talking marketing of fish. We are talking about various aspects, the byproducts that come with the rearing of fish. Join us again in the second segment of your program. Stay tuned. Welcome back viewers, we are in the second segment of your program, Agricultural New Directions, Agribusiness. I am with Andre Hoffman, a fish farmer located here in Zimbabwe in Harare. He's doing fish farming in his backyard here in Avondale, where we are discussing the various aspects that come with rearing of fish. Now earlier on before we went to the break, Mr. Hoffman was taking us through the various regimes, the feeding regimes and the type of feed that he, uh, that he uses. If you're going to take it from there, say, I want us to talk about the feed that yeah. you use, the components in the feed, the nutrients in the feed, your supplement feed, just taking care of the fish in general. Okay, so what we've also embarked on is, uh, we, which is another topic completely, is black soldier fly. Okay. So what we do is we feed the maggots from the black soldier fly. We feed that as a protein source to the fish. Okay. We do that uh, once a day if we can get the, the harvest. It's obviously cold now, so the, the harvests have, uh, have reduced slightly. Okay. Um, we also uh, we buy just normal pro feeds uh, feed. Um, we follow the regime as, as to weights. We, we do a, a weighing schedule every week on each okay. tank. So every tank has to be uh, water changed completely once a week. Okay, now talking about you weighing your fish once a week, determining the size or the weight, the grams, 
Uh, generally, how is the uh, what change do you find in your fish? Say after feeding them a week, in terms of weights, the change. Well, we 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 we've, we've had exponential results. Okay. Right. We we have got documentation, photos to prove everything. Okay. We've had up to seventy grams of growth a week. Okay. That's right. Great. Which is which is significant. Okay. Um, you know, obviously in the juvenile stages, it takes. It takes them a long time to get to to sort of that sort of size. Okay. Then from juvenile size to the where the the, the growth is, is it's exponential, okay. right? And I mean, I've spoken to various fish people, and they they can't believe it, and they are saying, "What feed are you giving them?" And I'm saying, "Well, to be honest, I've reduced the feed, <laughs> right?" So they like look at me as if I'm confused, oh, right? Okay. But I've got all the data and everything to prove it, okay. right? I actually think because we're trying to go natural in the environment, because okay. if you look at places like Chivero, places like Darwindale, as soon as the algae came onto the water, you okay. had exponential growth of fish, okay. right? Especially tilapia, because I actually, from what I've learned and, and I, I watched a documentary about it, tilapia are predominantly a vegetarian fish, which oh, not, not many okay. people know. So okay. I, I'm assuming, and uh, look, it's new territory. So. I know that they are feeding off the algae because you can actually see it when the water is clear you can actually see them feeding off the algae at the bottom of the water. Okay. So if that's giving them a full growth <laughs> hormone may it continue right? Now let us talk about like earlier on as I introduced our episode I spoke as uh, I introduced it as sustainable fish farming methods. Yes. Now let us link this point to crop cultivation to crop growing. Where is the economics behind that? Okay, so about five months ago, yes. um, we, by mistake, okay. uh, came across, we were doing a water change. We were offloading our water change in, into the garden that had a bit of tubage growing in the back there. Oh, okay. And uh, we saw that now, the, the way we were offloading the water, the cobs and the stems of these things are getting very strong. Okay. I'm not a farmer, so don't don't be fooled. <laughs> it's okay. Right? I understand fish. Okay. That's where my knowledge is. But what I've done is I've understood that the the business is not the fish. Okay. Right? I, I, a lot of fish farmers are going to kill me now. But okay. Uh, the business is the water. This okay. this is liquid gold. It's rich. It's in rich nutrients. in nutrients. Nitrogen, okay. potassium, ammonia, everything that, uh, that a plant wants. Okay. Now because we're also oxygenating the water, from what I understand of what happens with plants, it absorbs a lot faster into the plant. Oh. Okay. Because it's an oxygenated fertilizer. Okay. So from my understanding, this can only be uh, something that can be taken a lot further, a lot okay. more commercial, okay. right? Because at the end of the day, if you're reducing, what are your two biggest costs in farming? Inputs. Inputs. Fertilizer. Fertilizer and feed, right? Yes. So I've reduced feed. Okay. And we're going to reduce fertilizer on our plants. Okay. Right? So now you've got a, a fish that's going to grow out for nine months, let's say, worst case scenario. In that nine months, you're going to probably have three, depending on what crop, three, four crops. Okay. So you're going to have cash re revenue generation from Which your is very crops, true. right? Yes. And then right at the end of it, you've got however many fish you've got left in your tank to then sell. So that's a bonus. Yes. So you're actually not fish farming to get the fish to sell the fish for meat. You actually want the fish to live. I actually don't want to sell my fish until. I'm, at a later I'm, stage. Uh, right at a later stage, okay. where I can get the best bang for my buck. Because okay. I get as they get bigger, you get more money, obviously, yes. because they're heavier. And then, you, then you've got a big bonus, one lump sum of big cash in, input into your farm or into your venture, and then you, you it, it can only work economically. Yes. Now, Andre, as we talk about uh, high intensity fish farming, I understand that this speaks definitely to issues to do with climate change. 
I understand in urban areas there can be food shortages where one person might want to resort to growing their own tomatoes, want to resort to growing their own shibagi, a small piece of land in their backyard. So in, in, uh, instead of waiting for water to, 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 to come at night or 2 p uh, 2 a.m. for them to water their garden, he can just resort to using this water as he will be releasing it. It is rich with nutrients that the fish would have excreted. Yes. Now let us talk in terms of chemical application. This kind of water is rich in nutrients, but isn't there a bit of skepticism in terms of it carrying diseases or uh, being a conducive environment for, for pests to thrive within a crop? What are your sentiments on that? Well, I mean, obviously it's organic, right? So, okay. so yes, it's going to bring uh, organic uh, pests, etc., to the to to your crop. Okay. The beauty is because it's natural. If 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 you were to see the stems and the strength of the the the, the crop that we had produced of tomatoes and potatoes, right? Uh, just a trial. I mean, we literally, we dug a hole, put them in, and we let them go right okay the strength of those uh, plants and as far as I know in aquaponics the strength of the plants is what is actually the pesticide oh, okay. right it's resistance. it's resistance but there's okay. obviously there's a lot of organic uh, concoctions that you can put together to get rid of red spider mite to get rid of blight to get rid of all aphids and all that type of thing so obviously we would teach people okay. how to do this right and we would give them uh, as much knowledge and info as possible but we're also learning okay. now andre i want you to talk to our audience our farming community those that are into fish farming i understand that some whenever they are changing their water they just throw it away sure. your sentiments before we go to the break i want us to talk about your sentiments in terms of this water to those that are just throwing it away the components of this water. So I can go find an agurasa mari kanda kunze. Okay. Right. It's the same, it's as, throwing the same as throwing away money. money. Okay. Right. Because at the end of the day, this is what matters: is the water, oh, right? Okay. Not the fish. If if the fish is your bonus at the end of the program, right? What matters is the water. Okay, there you had it viewers. Andre here is telling us that throwing away the water that the fish has been living in when you do your water circulation changes is just like throwing away money, throwing away high valued money. There you had it viewers. We'll be right back with this and more in the third and final segment of your program. Stay tuned. viewers for staying tuned to agricultural new directions agribusiness in this particular episode we are talking of high intensity fish farming and we are in the third and final segment of your program now viewers we encourage you to be a part of these conversations feel free to get in touch with me the producer or Zanai Manyore on 0772-807-506 alternatively you can go to our twitter handle is agribusiness110 you can also make a follow-up on this episode and more on our YouTube channel, Agribusiness with Wadzanai, like our Facebook page, Agribusiness with Wadzanai. Now, earlier on, before we went to the break, Andre here was telling us that throwing away this kind of water is literally throwing away money. Now, Andre, we'll come back to the third and final segment of our program. Thanks, Wadzi. Yes. Now, I want you to talk about the value of this water and its importance to our soil. I understand that Zimbabwe has been on the top of things in terms of, uh, if you look at SADC, in terms of conservation, taking care of our soil, farming with future generations in mind. Let us talk about the value that this water has if it's applied to our soil. One of the biggest benefits of uh, doing the sustainable fish farming is that a lot of the nutrients obviously don't only get absorbed by the plants, right? Okay. You're actually putting back a lot of good nutrients into the into the soils, okay. right? So when you're looking at uh, agronomy and you're looking at how, how to test your soils, etc., right? From as far as I'm aware, and I, I don't, I don't want to go off, off on, a, on a tangent, but as far okay. as I'm aware, this actually replaces a lot of good nutrients okay. into your soils whilst you're, whilst you're irrigating. Okay. So it, 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 it's only a good thing. 
okay. as far as I'm concerned. Now, if you look at our government at the moment, there are calls from the Ministry of uh, Lands, Agriculture, Water and Rural Resettlement where they are calling for food security at household level. Well, this kind of high intensity fish farming, let's align it to food security at household level. What are your sentiments? Well, what's the, I've got four tanks here, right? Yes. These four tanks will irrigate two hectares of land. Okay. Right? So, for someone who's got a house uh, like I have here in Avondale, right, you could plant your crops, you could even have surplus. Yes. Right? So, not only are you going to be able to feed yourself, but you're also going to be able to sell something to at least maybe buy all sorts of other little proteins, etc., that will now feed your family, right? Yes. So, not only are you looking at food security from a one household perspective, but like I said, if we've got two hectares of, uh, of, of irrigation capability with the water that we have here, what more if you've got a hundred tanks? What more yes. if you've got a thousand tanks, right? Yes, it's a little bit expensive to, uh, to initially, it, it, to initially set, up. set up, right? Yes. If you're going the thousand tanks route, right? Yes. But if, if you're putting in nutrients back into your soil, if you're reducing your fertilizer, and if you're going organic, right? That's the way the world's going. Yes. So surely it should be something, it should be a concept that someone should take on board. We're looking at, we're looking at rolling this out, but obviously, you know, when you're like talking to, like you said, on a government perspective or on a NGO perspective, I mean, this, this is something that, that could definitely be rolled out. The, the only drawback is you need electricity. Okay. Right? So, it, it, yes, it, it sort of narrows down what you need to do, but then if you're, if you're doing it with an NGO or something like that, it's something that they could then factor in into the costings, putting solar, you're now reducing the pressure off or the grid. Or a generator. Uh, or a generator. Yes. Um, but obviously if you're going solar, if you want to go organic, go solar. You're now looking at, now you're reducing the pressure off the grid. Yes. Now, Andre, as we were talking, I understand that if you look at our United Nations Agenda Vision 2030, a sustainable development goal number 12 talks of sustainable production and responsible consumption. Now, this definitely speaks volume in terms of sustainability in agriculture. Our government has been talking about the Pumbuza concept, where they are talking about conservation systems, sustainable production systems. Now, let us talk about moving away from that a bit. In terms of understanding that we might be struggling as a country with a trade imbalance. The imports are exceeding our exports. And if you look at our imports, we are importing fish, we are importing macro fish, and yet you are here setting up this kind of high intensity fish farming. What are the sentiments on that? If everyone or if quite a number of people are going to adopt this high intensity method fish farming, how is it going to address issues in our economy? Trade imbalance, well, import substitution. Well, what do you remember that the fish is, the fish is a, a, a necessary to make the fertilizer. Yes. So I'm saying to you that with that, right, the fish is something that is a non-essential trading commodity. Yes. So if you've got a thousand fish in here at around about 500, 600, maybe 700 grams in, in weight, right, you've got one and a half tons of fish. Yes. Right? So one and a half tons of fish all the way through your tanks. You just have to do the numbers, right? Now all of a sudden you're now saying, okay, well, at the end of your growth period, you're getting this inflow of fish. It now reduces the level of having to get foreign currency. Yes. It now reduces the level because you're now producing your own fish locally. Finally, as we round off our segment, Andre, your recommendations. The biggest thing is learn. Okay. Educate yourself. Yes. Don't go and spend a lot of money too quickly. Yes. Understand the environment you're in. This tank ran for four months before I put in my second tank. Oh, okay. Right? Because in as much as I knew the theory, I wanted to put it in practice. Oh, okay. Right? So don't go waste money and put in ridiculous amounts of tanks because even that brings its own headache. Yes. Thank you, Andrew, for joining us today. It was such a pleasure having you with us on our platform. Thank you, Wadzi. There you had it, viewers. Educate yourself. Take time to research. Do a green revolution. Seek advice before you invest into any kind of project. From me, your host, Wadzana Emanyore, and the crew behind the scenes, have yourselves a fabulous evening. Thank you for watching.